What's up, everybody? And welcome back. It hasn't been that long, has it? We're already here together with a little redirect from the Brian Koberger video. We'll give it just a few seconds for everybody to sign on from Facebook. Yeah, the redirect is kind of cool, right? And we, we've we done multiple topics on videos before. We're trying some different things, like I said, and like we've talked about. Um, so we're hopping over to talk Sarah Boone. And we've gotten a ton of context, unlike the Johnny Depp case where we went into it not really knowing a lot of what happened beforehand. When I say we, I should say me. Um, but in this Sarah Boone case, we've watched the interrogation. We've watched the initial admissions and arrest. We've were when they reported to the scene, I should say. Somebody got very angry at me for calling it the arrest before. Um, somebody said they didn't get redirected. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it I'll give a little intro here to what we what we know on Sarah Boone. Andy with an I. Yes, I just did a Koberger video. So after this one's over, go check it out on YouTube. It'll be there. Um, so we've got the context of, we've heard the entire interrogation, which took three videos to do. We watched the, after the 911 call, when they report to the house. Um, and, <clears throat> and now we're going to actually hear the 911 call. Okay. And what she says and compare it to the other admissions and statements she's already made compare it to the other explanations that she's made because, huh, no redirect, receive the notification. Thank you for letting me know. I don't take these as complaints. I take this as construction, constructive, not criticism, but I, I take this as constructive comments here because we do want to figure it out. It is new to us. Um, people that did not get redirected, let me know. Yeah, we had like 5,000 in the other one and only 2,000 here, so I'm not positive what happened there. Um Yes, Idaho mom, you've got to like this video again. If you liked the other one, it doesn't translate to this one, so hit that like button again. So we have, and this is one of the issues for Sarah Boone. We have so many admissions made by her. We have so much explanation as to what was happening, why it was happening, what she thought, what she felt, what she did, that if, and I'll say when, she changes her story, it doesn't look good for her. Okay. Um, Kathy's saying it won't let me like again. Well, then that means you already liked it. So it should be okay. All right. No, a lot of no redirected. Interesting. We'll look into that. Um, okay. So let me, uh, hit some new members here. Look at all this. Oh, Lisa B. Some of these, I think were joined during the last one. Shauna Williams, but why not mention them again? D bell, Gabby Hartman, VG Packer fan definitely was in on the other one. Cargo pilot guy and Kim Adams. Cargo pilot guy, 747 or eight would love to give you and your dad a tour of a jet if interested. Obviously, I'm interested. Where are you located? Hopefully, you say Tampa Bay. Get at the lawyer you know at gmail.com, cargo pilot vet. Maybe we'll do a little members only video there too. I see you're a member. That would be a really cool members only video. Uh, T.S. Duff, perfect redirect. Awesome. And George the Cat will be there. Welcome, George. Okay. So let's get to it. We've had a few minutes. About half of you, it looks like, are in here from the last video. Maybe some people weren't interested in the Sarah Boone thing, which is okay. One of the things that we're, we're getting close to 175K. That's a push. Hopefully we um, are able to get there soon. Sarah Boone's trial is in Orlando. And we've talked about if we can hit certain milestones, we don't know what that is yet, maybe 190K, maybe 200K subscribers, that I'll actually go over there and do some videos from the location outside the courthouse, try to sit in on a couple days of trial. I won't be able to sit there the whole time, obviously, because I already have some appointments scheduled for that week, but I can bring my computer, try to work remotely from that courthouse. I can also meet with some of my clients in the area since we have some clients in the area that we don't meet with as often because it's an hour or two away. But I think that'd be kind of cool. And I think you guys would like it. I think you guys would benefit from it. Actually having me look at the jury a little bit. Um, sometimes it's beneficial. Sometimes it's not. We'll see how the cameras are doing. We'll see how the audio is doing and how it's picking it up. But if we can hit some milestones, we're going to make it happen. Okay. Because I think it'd be cool. And I think you guys would enjoy it. If you would enjoy that, let me know in the comments. And yes, 
DDAR, subscribe, y'all. Yeah, that would be cool. 250K, that'd be awesome. Okay, so now that we're all here, some people, if you want to complain, rightfully so, this is taking longer than it usually does uh, for us to get to the topic of the video. We're about to list this 911 tape. Nicole is a new member. Uh, K-Rab, the redirect issue is not just your channel. It doesn't work for me on any channel. So it seems to either work for you or it doesn't. That's annoying and strange. Cargo pilot guy says, I fly tons out of Tampa. We're going to have to make this happen. That would be cool. All right. Let's get to, and it's just audio. They do have stuff flashing across the screens. Um, it's only nine ish minutes. So we're going to watch it on one time speed. Um, but the stuff on the background doesn't really matter. The, the actual video portion or the pictures that they're showing the audio is the important part. So let's, let's listen to it together. What is the location of your emergency? Four, seven, four, eight, Brent, four. It sounds like it's, it sounds like I was listening to it on 1.5 speed. All right, here we go. Apartment three. Four, seven, four, eight. What's the street name? France. F Hold on. I don't think I have this coming out the right. Yeah. All right. Let's try this again. And let me know if you guys are having any sound issues. One, one. What is the location of the emergency? Four, seven, four, eight. France Court. Apartment three. Four, seven, four, eight. What's the street name? France, F-R-A-N-T-Z. And the apartment number? Three. Is this a police or medical? My boyfriend is dead. So there's the first submission right there. My boyfriend is dead. Not, I'm not sure, something happened, he's not breathing. She knows he's dead at this point, and we know that some time at least has gone by because she was sitting upstairs in her bed she did not get out of bed and walk downstairs immediately after she woke up. She already admitted that to the cops on body cam. And she called her ex-husband who had to come all the way over there. I know he didn't live far away, but she called him. She decided to call him. She called him, talked to him. He comes over. She waits for him to get there. He tells her to call 911. That's when she calls 911. So a lot of time has gone by and she knows that George is dead. Okay, send the line for the fire department. Do not hang up. A lot of you are saying she sounds so calm. She sounds like she doesn't care. If a jury hears this, they're going to be able to make that determination. Fire rescue. It's a location of mercy. That's better. No, please don't leave. Four, seven, four, eight, France Lane, apartment three. France. She said, please don't leave. Now, my guess would be she said that to her ex-husband, but I'm not positive. And I don't know if we ever find that out. Court. France Court. Yes. Okay, is this near Mackenzie Drive? I don't know where that is. Okay, okay. It's Hillwood Park Apartments. Okay, 4748 France, correct? Correct. All right, great. Now tell me exactly what happened there. Uh, my boyfriend and I were playing last night, and mm -hmm. I put him in his case, and we were playing. And my boyfriend and I were playing last night. I put him in a suitcase, and we were playing. I put him in a suitcase is what she says as her first explanation of the events to the 911 operator. And one thing we didn't have also that I don't remember hearing from her ex-husband is, did she tell him what happened? Because if he's called as a witness, they're going to ask, what did she tell you happened? What did she say happened to George? Because here in the first time she talks to law enforcement or through 911 is, I put him in a suitcase. Right? Because she doesn't say that later on. Binky, I think the picture of the suitcase is just them flashing across the scene, some other stuff from this, clips from other uh, videos, and I believe that is a clip from the picture from her phone where she took the video when he was actually inside begging for her to let him out. And if you want a full breakdown of those videos, go check out our playlist on uh, Lawyer You Know on YouTube. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll be able to see all those videos. Okay. 
like kind of hide and seek kind of thing. So I fell asleep. She sticks to hide and seek. And yes, this is part of the clip from her phone. Cause you can see the suitcase moving with him in it literally. And she took these videos on her phone, but she does stick to the hide and seek uh, storyline here. And I woke up and he was dead in the suitcase. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Right, okay. What's your apartment number? Three. Apartment three? Yes, like he has like blood coming out of his mouth, and I don't know if like he had like an aneurysm or like what happened. Right, okay, all right, okay. Listen, we're getting help with 13. All right, okay. Okay, I. I now? Okay, four, yeah, man, listen, we're on our way out there. You're at 407 716 Okay, is he hanging from somewhere or what, ma'am? No, I pulled him out of the suitcase. I tried oh, giving him CPR. Is he hanging from somewhere? Now, to give some grace to this 911 operator, he probably can't fathom what she's saying. Like you put you put this guy in a suitcase and zipped him up, and now he's dead. I think he thought he was hung or something from something. But this is just how strange this is. As we've talked about this enough, so for like for us to describe this case, we go, oh, "It's the suitcase case." But other people, I see some new people in the chat. They're like, "How did he get in the suitcase?" Well, he must have at least gotten in there himself under his own accord at some point. But then she zipped him up and then wouldn't let him out. He couldn't get out probably by the way his body was contorted, and then she passed out upstairs and the next morning he was dead all right okay so he's, uh, he was in a suitcase yes and i fell asleep okay how old is the how old 42. is the boyfriend now 42 Thank year you. old man all right okay we're we're sending we're sending help out there share such anyway out there yes i'm sorry yeah okay all right listen to me okay that i, I just need, I just need to confirm this one all right, I understand. I just need to confirm this. Is he is he awake at all? Is he conscious at all? No, he's purple. Is he, right, is he breathing? No. All right. I need you to get. I need you to get him on the floor, flat on his back for I me. Did. Okay. I did. I did. I tried giving him CPR. All right. I tried giving him CPR. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, we're, we're, nothing happened. He's purple. Right. Okay. Listen to me. There's a defibrillator. I need you to. Get... So. Kim, why did she give him CPR if she thought he was dead? This is actually really common in these kinds of cases because lay people, they don't know. They think it might help. They don't know if they're sure that somebody's dead just because they check them. So it's not not that uncommon. Get it for me, okay? What is it? Do you have an AED available? No. All right. Do you write by him now? I'm sorry? You, are you right by him now? Yes. Okay, okay. Lay him flat on his... Okay, ma'am, ma 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 listen. Uh, so listen, is he cold and stiff? Yes. Okay. Well, he's okay. not necessarily cold, but he's stiff. And right, he's okay. Purple. All right, listen to me. I, uh, listen, listen to me. I want you to lay him flat on his back for me on I the did. floor. I did. Removing the pillows, okay. Yes, I did. All right, okay. We, he's stiff and purple. Right, okay, listen. Okay, man, that's fine. We're, we're still going to do compressions on him, okay? All right? Place the heel of your hand on his breastbone, right in the center of the chest, right between the nipples. Yes. Put your other hand on top of that hand. Baby, I'm telling you. Just by okay. looking at him, you can tell. Okay. Ah! Please! Okay, he just gurgled. Okay. Seemed like a realistic reaction, if I'm trying to nitpick here. Um, and at least she's trying to do CPR. Bodhi said, I heard she faked doing CPR. I don't know. Um, but the ex-husband was there. Was he in the room? What did he see? That's why he's going to be such a key witness, because not only was he the first one she called and he showed up, but he was also there for all of this. Okay, L listen to me. All right. I want to play. I want you to place the heel of your hand, uh -huh. okay, right between the right between his chest, right between his breastbones. Yes. Put your other hand, put your other hand on top of that hand. Yes, we okay. want we want to pump his chest to me hard and fast, going to this twice per second. I'm doing it again. Okay. No. No. Just keep on pumping. That's all you need to do for me. Keep on pumping his chest for me. That's, I don't need you to stop and talk okay. or anything. I just want okay. you to count out loud for me. Okay. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. This is this is nice. Okay, ma'am, just keep on pumping his chest. That's all you need to do for me, okay? She seems very like annoyed and angry when told that you know she needs to do the CPR this way. It's a strange, strange tone. Yes. Come on, please. Hurry up. Okay, ma'am, ma'am, they're driving here as fast as they can. Okay, don't stop to say hurry up. Just keep on pumping and counting. I'm, I'm still doing it while I'm pumping you, okay? Okay. Still doing it. All right, just keep, just continue. 
publishers. Count on a second count with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. 30, 31, 32. Please hurry. Okay, man, they're getting there as fast as they can, okay? He's stiff and he's purple. Okay. It's all of it's weird and doesn't really make sense, but it's a traumatic event, so people are not thinking straight. If she already knew that he was dead, why is she telling them to hurry? Why is she acting so frantic? Why is she doing CPR? All of this can be explained away, in my opinion. The big part about this was the admissions in the beginning, uh, but we're going to keep listening to the end to see if she says anything else. Pumping his chest for me, ma'am. I'm still doing it, okay? Still doing it. Just don't make right. me cut. Right, okay, that's fine. Just, you, you did the job. Just keep on doing it for me. That's, all right, they're getting there as fast as they can, along with the sheriff's office also, okay? Please! Okay. Keep on pumping, ma'am. One, we were two, three, four, one, two. She wants to make sure everybody knows they were playing hide-and-seek. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Keep on pumping for me, ma'am. I'm not doing it. I'm doing it. Believe me, I'm doing it, okay? We are playing okay. hide and seek. Okay. All right, I understand. All right, just keep on pumping for me, okay? Okay. Please hurry. This right, okay. Horrible. This is horrific. What happened? Like, what happened? Okay, ma'am, just keep on pumping his chest. She sounds annoyed at the questions. Uh, when the criminals insist that they're already dead to me, that equals how badly they want them gone. And that's the first thing that she said. And Daniel said as a potential juror, uh, I don't know that I would like her annoyed tone of voice. voice. Greetings from Boise. Greetings, Daniel. And yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be a fair thing for jurors to look at um, and, and discuss. There's a couple other questions here I am going to get to after we're done with the video. They're kind of a little more overarching or off-topic questions. For me, okay? They're, they're, in, they're, they're in the parking lot. They should be up there shortly, okay? I'm still doing it, okay? All right, okay, good. And you found them in a suitcase, you said? Yes. We were playing hide and seek last night. I fell asleep. I think they're here. All right, just keep on pumping this shit until they take over. I okay? am, I am. Okay. I am. Okay. So they just announce it right to her. Unfortunately, he's been down for too long. There's nothing we can do. So that's the official announcement by medical personnel is what it sounds like who just arrived. And, and my guess is, cause it doesn't sound like they've been there long enough to really do anything, but just by looking at him, they probably know. Hello, ma'am. So we're there, obviously. Uh, That's the end of the call. So not a ton at the end, but a lot of admissions in the beginning. And Valerie 
Oh, sorry. I was going to ask uh, Phillips question first. Peter, would you take this case? Uh, probably not. And it's hard for me to tell because I haven't ever spoken to or met Sarah Boone, but judging off of some of her letters and some of the shenanigans I've read through in what's happened throughout the prosecution here or the investigation of her case, I don't know that we would mesh well as client and attorney, but it's not because of the crimes charged. Um, and if she had a legitimate excuse or reason why this happened, then, you know, I would take this case if I felt like there was a legitimate defense here. Um, and Valerie asked, would I let her take the stand? So I will tell you, there's two schools of thought on this. And I can't answer that without actually talking to her and seeing what she would say. But when a defendant has already spoken so much and they have so many of her statements, what's the harm in putting her on the stand, at least trying to get her to explain away some of it or explain why she was frantic or traumatized or why she explained it like this or that, or what she meant by this or that. Sometimes you allow that to happen. Or some people say, no, we don't want her to get impeached anymore. We don't want to have to have her explain why she said some of the things that she said. So it really just depend on how she explained the story to me and whether or not I believed her and felt like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Aideen, do you think it's possible to find an unbiased jury? I do. I don't think this case has quite risen to the level of some of the other cases. Um, and I think that, you know, for an intentional homicide, it would potentially be a case that is um, winnable. JP, will would Sarah be free had this happened 25 years ago before cell phones with cameras existed? I don't think she'd be free because 911 would still show up. Officers would still talk to her. She'd still give this explanation of I put him in, I zipped him up, I passed out, I don't know what happened. And then the interrogation would have still happened um, where she made all those admissions and told all those stories. Now, what I think would be different is without those cell phone videos, this would most likely be a manslaughter case, an accidental killing case, not a second degree murder charge that they're trying her on. So I do think that would be a difference. I also think they charge her with that, potentially thinking she would plead to unintentional um, homicide, but she hasn't done that yet. Lita, do you know if the coroner can tell if a person has had CPR performed on them? I would think they would be able to, especially for that long. Um, they would be able to tell based on maybe uh, bruising or trauma or something to the skin or sternum or something like that. I would think that type of thing would be testified to. Mary L12, greetings from Pinehurst, North Carolina. Great golf from Pinehurst. Um, and that would go to what her intent was and what her thought process was as well, whether or not she actually did the, the CPR. Labyrinth, I don't buy that she was doing compressions. She would have been audibly fatigued. Thanks, Peter. And a lot of people have said that. Like, you know, for this long, doing compressions on somebody while you're talking on the phone, while this traumatic event had happened and you're hyperventilating, you wouldn't have been so calm and clear-minded. I think if Labyrinth potentially was a juror or other people that have experience, they could bring that to the jury room. I'm not so sure that that's going to be evidence that comes in, but if she takes the stand, then they can ask her those questions. So again, it's a, it can go either way. Melissa Harden, when she said she couldn't breathe and she didn't let him out, when he said he couldn't breathe and she didn't let him out, it became murder. And that's the importance of those cell phone videos. Julia Scruggs, I'm a paralegal in Oklahoma and love hearing your perspective on all these cases. Definitely gets me to digging into the cases more. Well, thank you, Julia. And I'm glad you're here to bring your expertise to the table as well. Anna P, off topic, but what you and all of LawTube have done is strengthened future jurors. The education you guys provide regarding how to think about a case is amazing. Now I'm eager to get called for jury duty. And I've had a lot of people that are subscribers and followers on Instagram and Twitter reach out to me and tell me when they get jury duty. Uh, some of them haven't gotten picked, but if they do, they're going to let me know how it goes afterwards. I don't want to know anything uh, when I'm not supposed to know it or when you're supposed to be keeping it to yourself or keeping it confidential. Always do that after the case is over. If you want to, I'd love to hear about your experience um, anytime somebody is on a jury. And I agree. And I really hope what anybody you listen to on YouTube makes you think when it comes to the American judicial system is don't make up your mind before you've heard all the evidence and before the judge has told you what the law is and how to apply that evidence to the law, regardless of what you think, regardless of how you think something works based on your own personal experience, throw that out and listen to what they tell you in the courtroom. That's, that's one of the biggest takeaways, whether it's criminal, whether it's civil, whatever it may be. Wendy Reese, welcome to the membership crew and Kim Schofield. I'm really excited about the next, um, members only video, uh, mom sin. 
Yes, CPR usually breaks ribs when done properly. I don't know. I don't know if I've heard that um, testified to, but could be true. I agree. She would have been fatigued if you watch the video of Demar receiving CPR on the field. Um, the medical staff was rotating him because it's exhausting. Yes, I absolutely have heard stuff like that before. Now, I would say, um, I would say, she's a lay person, so maybe she doesn't know how to do it right. Doesn't mean she wasn't doing it at all. You just always have to remember that kind of stuff. Emma Simmons, your advice translates to jury service in any country. Correct. I agree with you. Completed the jury duty in Sydney, Australia. It was a great experience. That's awesome. It's Fitzy. Oh, CPR breaks ribs if not done properly, somebody said. Okay. Uh, Beck, more generally, just encourage and demonstrate critical thinking. Love critical thinking. Big fan of critical thinking on this channel. Um, did he go in the suitcase of his own free will, Sonia? I think at least partially. I don't think she could have physically forced him in the suitcase. I could be wrong. Um, but <laughs> how he went in, what he agreed to, being zipped up and maybe flipped upside down so he couldn't get out, the way his body was contorted... She definitely had the power to let him out and didn't, I think. Um, but we will see. Somebody just asked, Adam Ice. Peter, do you truly believe in jury cases? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you always get a perfect jury? Do you always get an honest jury? Do you always get the right jury? No. But I think it's the best system that we have. And who else to decide who's right and wrong Besides other people that may literally be in the situation these two clients are in, if it's civil or the one client, if it's criminal case, I think it's the best way that we have. We put the facts in front of them. We try to filter out any facts that are not credible or that could be untrue or not authentic. Um, it's a very convoluted process, but I think it's the best way to make these decisions. And they're very, very difficult decisions. Big fan of justice too, Beth. Absolutely. Cheryl Vrabel, I have jury duty next week. And for the first time, I hope I get picked. And that's a great thing to hear too. Cause I mean, it's almost a joke when I start jury selection. I know Pete used to do it all the time. I don't do it anymore, but I used to say, how many are actually excited to be here? And nobody's really excited to be there. Um, so I hope some of you guys do go into it and you're ready to listen. And if you get picked, you'll do the right thing, regardless of what your background is. I absolutely love how Americans say didn't. It's funny. Never heard anybody point that out before. All right. We're coming to the end of the rope here. We did, we knocked out two videos with a redirect. We lost a few. Hopefully they weren't interested in this content and they didn't just miss it. Or if they're part of the rewatch crew and the redirect didn't work, let me know. Um, I appreciate everybody joining us as always. Make sure you hit that like button on this video as well. If you haven't already, subscribe to our page. We're trying to hit some milestones here so we can end up in court for this Sarah Boone trial at the end of January, beginning of February. Gen B, former paramedic here. Ribs don't break per se, but they do get dislocated from the sternum, similar sound. And that face is pretty much exactly how I feel listening to you saying that. Uh, another retired paramedic said ribs definitely can be broken with CPR. So yeah, I mean, I think the point is stuff can happen to where you can see as a medical examiner whether or not somebody did CPR or tried to do CPR. Um, Y'all, Nana's not drunk. She put her son in a suitcase a couple of weeks before. I've heard that. Um, I wonder if that'll come in at trial. Ellen, not Sarah Lee Hogue. Uh, ribs break, not all the time. RNs in the chat, back that up. Yeah, I've seen some, a little bit of both on that, but it's cool. And I, I love the conversation and people bringing their expertise into it always makes it fun and adds to the content, which you all in the chat always do. I'm so thankful for you. I'm glad we were able to do this today. Thanks everyone that joined. Hit that like button on your way out and I'll see you soon.